Um, I, I put a short bio, it's uploaded on the, on the Indicom page. So I'm a physicist at CERN. Uh, I've been at CERN for many years. Uh, before that, I was a researcher uh, with the NFN, which is an institution in Italy. And before that, uh, I was a researcher in the in Rutherford lab. And uh, I worked on several experiments. Uh, first one on charm uh, production and the first measurement of the meson lifetimes. Then uh, um, I worked for many years at LEP in the Aleph uh, experiment and uh, I was very involved uh, with electroweak, electroweak physics at LEP and in particular I did the measurement of the number of neutrinos, first measurement of the number of neutrino generations which is one of the, um, of the main uh, results of LEP. And then I, I joined the LHCB collaboration, which is um, a collaboration at the LHC dedicated uh, to the study of flavor. And, um, and I will talk a little bit about that, but more in general terms, flavor in general terms, and uh, with some more specific uh, elements in the end. And then my colleague Marco Gersabek will pick up from there and um, um, uh, go a little bit more into the experimental aspects. Uh, so I would just share my slides now, right? Yes. Okay. So uh, let me check the time. Okay, so um, the title of my lecture is uh, Flavor Physics. Um, and so what I will talk about is uh, what is flavor physics and why it is interesting. Then uh, I will uh, talk uh, briefly uh, about CP violation and baryogenesis. I will make uh, some uh, historical remarks and then uh, talk uh, a little bit about the CKM matrix, the rise of B physics. And then I have added, uh, given that Marco will cover mainly um, <clears throat> CP violation, the experimental aspects of CP violation, uh, I decided to add uh, a few slides on rare decays because I think this is a very important subject. And um, yeah, so there is some overlap uh, with the presentation by uh, Sally Seidel in, on, uh, on these uh, topics, but I, I don't think it, it matters so much. And as I said, Marco uh, will go more into uh, really experimental aspects of um, um, and, and things which are important whenever you want to perform a CP violation measurements in the context of LACB. So um, flavor is a very vast subject and uh, flavor physics includes neutrinos, it includes charged leptons, it includes uh, K-on physics, charm and beauty physics, some aspects of top physics, and it's impossible to cover uh, all this uh, in, in an hour. So my focus here will be on some limited aspects of K-on charm and beauty physics, and even that uh, it will be uh, just uh, you know a, um, you, just to give you some some ideas uh, of what is going on in, in this domain. Uh, so let us start uh, with the question: uh, What is flavor? And where that does this funny funny name uh, comes? Uh, well, it comes from uh, uh, a time in, in, seven, in 71 in which uh, Murray Gellman and his student Harald Fritsch um, passing in front of an ice cream uh, shop in Pasadena came up with the term flavor to describe the different types of quarks. And so just as ice cream has both color and flavor, so do quarks. And uh, flavor physics uh, refers to the study of the interactions that distinguish between uh, the fermions, fermion generations. And, uh, and there are many mysteries uh, around that. Uh, and the uh, famous physicist uh, Isidore Rabi uh, asked uh, who ordered that uh, after the discovery of, uh, of the particle, the muon, uh, which is uh, 200 times heavier than the electron, but uh, everything else is uh, looks uh, you know completely looks the same. And then 
you know, why uh, does uh, the top uh, the top have a mass so much larger than that of a u quark and uh, you know the mystery became even even you know bigger uh, when uh, neutrino masses were discovered to to be many orders of magnitude lighter than any other matter field so why is that uh, why do we have three replicas and uh, and why this this you know this spectrum of uh, of, of masses in in the various uh, in the various generations and uh, the Higgs mechanism does not solve the problem of why each particle has a different mass uh, because it does not allow us to predict, uh, uh, to calculate uh, what these masses should be. So there are m many mysteries. And uh, even if the standard model is um, according, you know, after all these tests uh, performed at the various experiments, uh, at different, you know, in different energy regimes, uh, uh, the standard model remains the most successful and best tested theory of nature at the fundamental level. But, uh, but still, as I was asking before, what determines uh, the observed pattern of mass masses and mixing and mixing angles of quarks and leptons? Why are there what they are? Uh, in the standard model, the only, the only interaction that distinguishes the three flavors is the Yukawa interaction, so which is the interaction of the matter fields with the Higgs boson. And, uh, and the complex phases that are present in the Yukawa couplings are also the only source of CP violation. And so, and so another you know, very important question is, are there other sources of flavor and, and uh, CP symmetry breaking beside the, sun, beside the standard model Yukawa couplings, or is that it? So there are many things that we do not understand. And um, to be able to answer these questions is likely to shed light on physics uh, beyond the standard model. Uh, the standard model is extremely successful in describing all uh, you know, the vast range of natural phenomena, but it doesn't explain, for example, the things that we have just discussed. And, and flavor physics might also provide the first indications of new physics at energy scales that are beyond the reach of direct searches. And I will explain uh, at the end of the lecture a little bit more what is meant by, by this, uh, this sentence here. Another uh, relevant fact is that uh, uh, charge parity violation is connected to the matter-antimatter asymmetry of the universe. So the question is, where, where did uh, all the antimatter go? What led to the disappearance of antimatter, assuming that we started from an initial symmetric state? or if, if it was not symmetric at the very beginning, uh, inflation, assuming that inflation washed out any possible prior asymmetry. So uh, we know that antiparticles exist. For example, they exist in cosmic rays um, and they are consistent with secondaries due to the interactions of, uh, of the cosmic ray protons in the interstellar, interstellar medium. We also know that uh, in accelerators, we can produce and study antimatter, and we do that routinely. So antimatter exists, but where is it then, if we started from an initially uh, symmetric state? This looks really strange, given that the properties of matter and antimatter are very similar. So where did it go? Why is the universe 100% matter-antimatter asymmetric? So why are we in this uh, very strange situation? And um, we can define the baryon asymmetry of the universe, uh, which I call BAU, just before antibaryon disappeared from the primordial plasma as an asymmetry defined like that. Uh, so as a ratio between number of baryons minus number of antibaryons divided by their sum. And we know already that uh, this quantity now, after you know, the, the universe is 13 billion years, so after 10 to the 10 years, we already know that this asymmetry is one because uh, there are no, uh, and, 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 and B bar is equal to zero. So delta T now is equal to one. 
But since at the end products of the annihilation processes uh, are mostly photons and there are no antibaryons in the universe today, we can estimate uh, this baryon asymmetry in the universe by the baryon to photon ratio, which is called eta. So nb divided by n gamma, where n gamma is the product of this uh, annihilation here. And uh, from observations of the number of photons uh, in the micro, cosmic microwave uh, background, which is order 400 photons per centimeter cube, and the quantity of baryons uh, of matter in the universe, uh, you can calculate uh, this ratio. And it turns out that this, this ratio is very, very small, is of the order of 6 uh, times 10 to the minus 10. And, uh, so it's a very small number. The conclusion is that the Big Bang theory tells us that the baryon asymmetry of the early universe was a very small number, this number here. And today's uh, huge matter antimatter asymmetry, because the universe is, is made of matter, so this, this quantity is one, uh, was a tiny number in the past. So how did we come from a number which was so small to uh, something which is uh, uh, one now? And uh, if we uh, you know, depict uh, I mean, the, the matter and antimatter particles at the beginning of universe uh, uh, like this, uh, a box of matter and a box of antimatter, 10 to the minus sec uh, 6 uh, seconds later, you have at the level of 10 to the minus 10, you have an asymmetry between matter and antimatter. And uh, then antimatter and matter particles annihilated massively in the early universe, but a tiny fraction of matter was left over. Now, this one particle in 10 to the 10. So every 10 billion particles, or 10 to 11, a handful was not annihilated away. And uh, we are very lucky because the universe now is, is uh, you know, the consequence of this, uh, uh, of this uh, uh, tiny fraction of matter that was left over uh, after this uh, um, original annihilation. And uh, how did this happen? And a process which, was, which is called baryogenesis was hypothesized to generate this asymmetry dynamically from a, a matter antimatter symmetric initial state. And the idea, uh, the idea behind this uh, was uh, um, the person, the physicist who, ha who, who, uh, who, who had this idea uh, was, uh, is, uh, um, Andrei Sakharov, uh, uh, who is shown in this picture uh, while uh, visiting CERN. Uh, so this is Sakharov with his wife uh, visiting CERN. And this is Jack Steinberger, who was uh, also a very famous uh, physicist at CERN, who got a Nobel Prize uh, um, in physics as well, uh, in physics and uh, and so in 67 sakharov enumerated three necessary conditions for baryogenesis to to occur and incidentally uh, the work that he did on this subject on this subject went completely unnoticed for 11 years and and then people understood the, the importance of what uh, of what he had done and the sakharov conditions read as following in order to generate, so to generate uh, uh, the asymmetry dynamically, so to generate baryogenesis, you need to satisfy three conditions. So first, uh, there must be baryon number violation. Otherwise, there is no way to produce an excess of baryons. Second, you need violation of, uh, of charge and of, and of charge and parity. Because if uh, in C and CP are exact asymmetries, the total rate for any process which produces an excess of baryons is equal to the rate of the complementary process which produces an excess of antibaryons. And so you don't have an asymmetry. And then you also need to have a situation in which there is thermodynamic non-equilibrium. Otherwise, any asymmetry would be washed away by simple thermodynamics. And, and so 
we have a theory, which is uh, the standard model. Can the standard model explain baryogenesis? Uh, does it satisfy these conditions? Well, in principle, the standard model does carry all the ingredients that are necessary to satisfy the uh, Sakharov conditions that I um, uh, enumerated in the slide before. And, and actually, the relevant uh, measure is a quantity which is called the Jarskog determinant from the name of a woman physicist, the Swedish woman physicist, Cecilia Jarskog, uh, who, who did uh, um, this work. And I will come back to that. So uh, the Jarskog determin determinant is an invariant that identifies uh, CP violation in the standard model, and that depends on every physical quark mixing angle and okay uh, it's it's written here in in a compact form so cp violation in the standard model is proportional to this invariant j which is a dimensional quantity uh, obtained by uh, dividing uh, this uh, to, to obtain a the, 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 the dividing by the relevant temperature at, at which uh, it, it doesn't really matter to have a dimensional dimensional less uh, quantity you have to divide by, by a temperature but uh, the bottom line is that uh, cp violation in the standard model is is proportional to j and it it is much smaller than what you need is at the, of the order of 10 to the minus 20. so it is many orders of magnitude below uh, the observation and uh, therefore it cannot explain uh, uh, what we are observing and it's not enough I mean, it doesn't provide enough uh, cp violation so we need more cp violation and uh, and uh, and cp uh, cp violation beyond the standard model must exist but uh, then uh, if it must, must exist where might we find it well, we, we can find it, for example, in the quark sector as deviations from uh, uh, the Kabibo Komayashi Maskawa predictions. And I will come back uh, to that uh, uh, later on. Or we can find it, for example, in the lepton sector as uh, uh, CP violation in neutrino oscillations. And I think uh, uh, you had a lecture that, that covered a little bit this aspect. Or we can find it in other um, new physics uh, theories because uh, all, almost all TV scale new physics contains new sources of CP violation and, uh, and precision measurements of flavor observables uh, are generally uh, sensitive to additions to, to, the, to the standard model. So, uh, Flavor observables are a very good way um, to identify um, other sources of CP violation that can be related to new physics. So let me um, make some historical remarks and see how things evolved uh, in time. So the first building block of what we now call flavor physics was laid down by Nicola Cabibbo. Nicola Cabibbo is uh, shown in this picture, uh, a physicist uh, from Rome. Uh, he did that in 63, well before many on the standard, of the standard model ingre ing ingredients were clear. And uh, the Cabibbo theory of semi-leptonic decays provided the first step towards a unifi unified description of hadronic and lectonic weak interactions. So what did Kabibbo uh, do? Well, there was at the time um, a puzzle uh, that was not really understood, uh, which had to do with the decays of, of strange particles. And in particular, um, Delta S, so semi-leptonic weak decays, which change strange, strangeness by one unit, like for example, a decay of a K plus into mu plus, uh, mu plus neutrinos. This type of decays are suppressed relative to those which have Delta S equals to zero, such as uh, a decay of a pi plus, uh, uh, into, into the same final state, into a mu plus and a neutrino. So uh, then Cabibbo uh, hypothesized that the weak interactions couples to the up quark 
uh, couples the up quark here to an orthogonal combination of the down and strange quarks, which is determined by the Kabibbo angle. So you have here uh, the U quark, which is coupled to a combination of the D and S quarks, and, uh, uh, and um, the combination is driven by uh, the cosine and the sine of the of the Kabibbo angle. So the Kabibbo angle uh, theta c is the mixing angle expressing the weakly uh, uh, interacting down quark d prime in terms of fields with definite mass d and s. And this is a, a small uh, extract uh, from uh, the original paper. And uh, simply by comparing the rates of these two decays and uh, interpreting that in terms of this rotation uh, given by the Cabimbo angle, he found uh, something that already at the time was in very good agreement uh, uh, with the data. However, uh, Kabibo's theory could not explain uh, some other phenomena, and in particular, the suppression of strangest change in neutral current processes, like a decay of a K long into mu plus u minus, which is suppressed uh, with respect to the decay of a, of a K plus into mu plus uh, uh, nu at this level, 10 to the minus 8. And, and this oppression uh, was was really um, not understood at the time. And and in 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 1970, Glasho, Iliopoulos, and Mayani brought in a new fourth uh, change, uh, fourth quark, which which has a, a charge of two thirds, which they call charm. And you know the small detail was that it had not yet be, been discovered. Uh, this quark. And, and what happens is that, uh, so this is the process that is suppressed, and okay, long uh, into mu plus and mu minus. You see here the Feynman diagram that, uh, that uh, shows that type of process. If you introduce the charm quark that runs into this loop, uh, you add a, a decay amplitude to the original one, which, uh, which is, uh, essentially almost identical to the original one, but with an opposite sign. Because here you have a sine theta kabibo, and here we have, and here you have a minus, sorry, you have, a, you have the same amplitude, but with a minus sign. And uh, um, so this is an almost fully destructive interference. And the cancellation in reality not perfect because the U and C masses are not quite the same, and the result is proportional to mc squared minus mu, uh, mu squared. But essentially, at the price of adding a second doublet, the unwanted delta s equal one neutral currents uh, were cancelled. Huh? And at that time, you had a very nice uh, symmetric uh, situations between uh, the leptons and the quarks. And uh, this was a tremendous triumph of the theory, uh, because when on November 10th uh, in 1974, two groups, one at Brookhaven, uh, led by Sam Ting, using a proton beam on a fixed target, and the other one at SLAC, uh, at an E plus E minus accelerator, they simultaneously announced the discovery of the JSI resonance, which is a CC bar state with mass of 3.1 GeV, and this is you know, the, the, uh, the image of the decay that, uh, that show the existence of, uh, of this, uh, of this uh, CC bar state, and this is the invariant mass uh, shown here in this picture uh, of, uh, of Sam Ting. This led to the, the Nobel Prize uh, given to Ting and Richter in, in 1976, and uh, there was also a machine, uh, an E plus and, E plus and minus machine in Frascati that was running at the time, and actually the first uh, E plus and minus accelerators were, were built in Frascati in Italy um, 
and uh, um, a person, a physicist whose name is Bruno Tuschek, who was one of the, really of the, um, the, the guy who, who thought about that for the first time and built the first machine. And they were very unlucky because they had an energy just below uh, what they needed uh, to, to reach, uh, uh, to, to, to be able to produce the JPSI. So in physics, you need also luck, uh, as in um, many, many times in, in life. And, uh, and in fact, uh, uh, once um, the JPSI had been discovered, also the machine in Frascati was pushed beyond its nominal limit of energy and saw an overwhelming signal. And, and so it was clear that uh, uh, charm did exist uh, that had been predicted by Glacier Leopoldos and Mayani. And uh, not so long ago, the, the, the three people, so this is Shelley Glashow, this is Luciano Maiani, this is John Eliopoulos. Uh, they had a celebration after 50 years from uh, the famous paper about the gym mechanism. But this is not uh, the full story yet, uh, because we know that we, uh, that we have more than up and down and charm and strange. And, uh, and in fact, uh, with four quarks, uh, the, the matrix, uh, uh, which is matrix V, which expresses the ro rotation uh, that I have uh, shown before, that is generally, com gen generally complex can always be brought uh, to a real form, thereby excluding C CP violation from the weak interactions because you, ne you need a phase to be able to, um, uh, to have CP violation. However, three years later, in, uh, in 73, uh, two uh, Japanese physicists, Kobayashi and Maskawa, showed that the complex phase does remain if the matrix is three by three. And this is the matrix is now called uh, BCKM after Kabibo, Komayashi, and Maskawa. And it is possible to incorporate uh, the observed uh, CP violation in a theory with six quark flavors. This is really a remarkable conjecture when not even the second family uh, was completed. Uh, um, the B quark was discovered in 77 by Lederman and, and, uh, and, 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 and the top in 94. And the CP violation was discovered in the neutral Kiln system by Kroning and Fitch in uh, 1964, and they got uh, uh, the Nobel Prize uh, 16 years later. And okay, talk, talking about the, the neutral Kiln system, um, and uh, uh, what uh, Kroning and Fitch did uh, and uh, their uh, disco discovery of CP violation in the, in the neutral kaon system. So neutral kaons are states uh, with a core composition. For example, the K0 is a D and an, uh, has a core content, which is DS bar, and the K0 bar has a core content, which is S and D bar. And they are generated in strong interactions and they are distinguished by, by their production mode. So can, you can either produce a K0, for example, in this reaction, or you can produce, uh, produce a K0 bar, for example, in this reaction. And these are flavor eigenstates with a, with a specific defined core contact, which, core contact, which is given here. However, they mix via the, via the weak interactions, and the physical states are a superposition of a K0, K0 bar, um, and they are states with definite mass and lifetime. And um, the weak interactions were at that time thought to be invariant uh, under CP violation. And, and so one can build the CP eigenstate uh, starting from a K0 and a K0 bar. You can, uh, for example, uh, build the state which has parity plus, uh, which we call K1 and uh, CP parity plus and, and the state which has CP parity minus, uh, which is the sum of the K0, K0 bar, huh? while the other is a difference. And, uh, and uh, uh, these states are distinguished by their um, decay mode with the CP even, uh, which is this one, which goes into two, decays into two pions. And the CP odd, which is this one, which decays into three pions. And given that uh, uh, um, the mass difference between the kaon and the two pions is large and is much larger than the, uh, the mass difference between the kaon 
and and the three and the three pions, which is only 80 MeV, the two lifetimes of these two states are very different. So the K short or K1 decay quickly in two pions, while uh, the K long or K2 uh, take a longer time to decay into 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 the three pions. And um, in fact, uh, Cronin and Fitch, uh, shown here, Cronin and Fitch, they were investigated some uh, anomaly reported in uh, in another phenomenon, which is called regeneration, and um, uh, of the kaons. And they had uh, you know an, an experimental apparatus with two magnetic spectrometers. Uh, C28 is 20, 20, so these are the two spectrometers, 20, 20 meters away from the K0 production point. Uh, this is 300 K1 lifetimes uh, when only uh, the K2 are left. Uh, so only these guys are left, uh, those guys who decay into three pions. So uh, you should not see uh, a decay of uh, uh, of these states into two pions uh, because all the uh, all the short-lived component must have decayed decayed away in this in this volume in this uh, um, in this uh, long volume and, and actually if you if you have uh, a decay uh, of a kaon into into only two pions then the angle between uh, the, the spectrometer was designed as such that the angle between the vector sum of the two momenta measured in the in the spectrometer and the beam direction should be zero uh, because uh, it's a two-body final state. While it is different from zero uh, if you have a three-body decays, which are not supposed to observe because uh, um, because uh, of what I told you before. Uh, however, what they found uh, that uh, uh, a clean peak of 45 events was found in the forward direction at the right mass. And, and these 45 events uh, correspond uh, to uh, a component of K-long decaying into two uh, final state pions with a branching fraction of the order of 2 10 to the minus 3. So, this observation of the K-long decaying into two pions implies that the K-long is not a pure CP eigenstate. And actually the physical state have uh, uh, the K-long and, and K-short have, have a small component of the op opposite parity and they're not a pure uh, CP, CP eigenstates as, as people thought they were. So the picture is more complicated than that and, and, and parity is violated and CP is violated. Uh, I also include here a more modern notation as a reference in terms of parameters P and Q, but it's not really important uh, to discuss it uh, now. And um, um, so, um, the generalization uh, to six quark uh, uh, by Komayashi and Maskawa, so in in uh, in uh, in 73, 10 years after uh, the Kabibbo theory, um, allowed to introduce uh, CP violation in a natural way, uh, if there are at least the three families of quarks. And this uh, observation led uh, to the recognition by uh, the Nobel Committee to uh, Kobayashi Maskawa, who were awarded the Nobel Prize in 2008, while poor Kabibbo was, uh, um, was left out uh, and many uh, of us <laughs> um, uh, thought uh, that this was, was quite unfair, but okay. And uh, le let us talk about uh, the CKM, uh, the CKM matrix. So VCKM describes the rotation between uh, the flavor uh, uh, eigenstate d prime s prime and b prime and the mass eigenstate d s and b. And you see here the elements of uh, the matrix: view d, view s, view b, etc. And Vij is proportional to the transition amplitude 
from quark i to quark j. And this is why BCKM is called, is called the quark mixing matrix. And so, for example, BUB is proportional to the transition amplitude between a quark B and a quark U no? through a W emission. So, BCKM induces flavor change in transition inside and between generations in the charge sector at the tree level. Uh, so uh, through a W plus minus interaction. By contrast, there are no flavor change in transi transitions in the neutral sector at tree level. Uh, and this is also called technically, uh, there are no flavor change in neutral currents, no F, C, and C. But we will come back uh, to that at the end of the lecture. So, then you may ask uh, the question, how many independent parameters are needed to determine uh, the, VC, the, the VCKM matrix? So uh, the matrix is an n by n complex matrix with n equal to three. So it has uh, n square complex en entries with n square unitarity constraint because it is a unitarity matrix, which means that it has 2n square minus n square minus minus n squared, so n square real parameters. Now it turns out that 2n minus 1 phases are not physically meaningful because you can uh, rotate them away, let's say. So VCKM depends on n square minus 2n plus 1 real physical parameters that you can also re rewrite and, as n minus one squared. Now we know that uh, an orthogonal matrix uh, in general has n uh, times n minus one divided by two independent parameters. For example, mixing angles in the case of n uh, equals to three, which, which are the three Euler uh, angles. So VCKM has n times n minus 1 divided, divided by two mixed in angles, while the rest is the phases. Uh, the rest is uh, this expression minus the number of mixing angles. So if you have n equal 2, for example, uh, you put n here and uh, equal to 2, then you find that you have uh, um, one uh, mixing angle theta c and no phases uh, because uh, you simply put it in uh, in this, if you have n equal to this term, it terms uh, goes away, you have zero phases. But if you have n equal to three, then you have three angles, uh, because uh, uh, you see it uh, uh, from this expression, and one complex phase, because if you put it here, uh, you have the, the result for n equal three gives you one complex phase delta. Uh? So you have managed to generate one complex phase. So imp there are important consequences to that. If we want to see large CP violating effects coming from the CKM matrix, you must look for processes which involve, even in leading approximation, quarks from all three generations, because you need the three generation to generate, uh, to generate the phase. Large CP violating asymmetries are expected in B decays uh, for this reason, uh, because this is the B quark is part of the third generation. Uh, while CP violation in K, or, in K on decays is small, regardless of the value of the complex phase, because the dominant diagrams involve only quarks for the, from, from the first uh, two families. And therefore we have seen before that uh, in, in the case, sorry, in the case of uh, n equal two, you have no phase, and so you have no 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 um, no CP violation, no, no big, no large CP violation. Um, the VCKM uh, matrix can be parameterized uh, in uh, in in several ways. For example, it can be written as proposed by these gentlemen here as a product of three independent two by two uh, blocks. And um, the advantage of this parameterization is that mixing angles are of different orders of magnitude. Um, 
and and so you can uh, uh, so for example this this angle uh, s12 is of the order of is essentially the the sine of the of the kabibo angle and then you have uh, um, or terms in order lambda squared and terms in order lambda lambda cube where lambda as i said is uh, sine theta kabibo which is equals to 0 0.22 but it is convenient to make this hierarchy even more explicit following uh, a parameterization proposed by Wolfenstein. And uh, the parameterization is uh, shown in this uh, uh, expression here, where you have the various components, uh, uh, the various terms expressed uh, in terms of the- uh, uh, Monica, there is a question on the charts. Um, ah, sorry, I don't yeah. see. Meiki wants to know if uh, the CKM matrix is diagonal diagonalizable. If the C if it is diagonalizable. N no, it is not diagonal. You see it here. It's not diagonal. But can it be? If is it diagonal in the in the in the uh, eigenstate? Uh, space or mass against its space? Is that no, it is not. Uh... It is, um, it is not a diagonal matrix in this, yeah. uh, uh, in, as, as you can see. Yes. But can you do a transformation to a, a different space where it will be a diagonal matrix? Meiki, is that your question? Could you, could you ask? Uh, yes, yeah. Yeah, uh, the, the initial um, or the previous uh, CMK uh, matrix, I mean the one in the previous slides. Sorry for the interruption. Say so again? Sorry, sir. Uh, okay, so it's like in the previous slides, uh, before, you, before you started talking about the eigenstates, um, I wonder whether it, um, the CMK matrix is a diagonalizable matrix. I mean, before, it, before you, you said the previous slide? Yeah, yeah. Which one? Uh, yeah, this one. Yeah. yeah. Oh, th these My are this, was, uh, this it, these are different yeah. terms. It's not a diagonal matrix. Yeah. Okay. That's what I wanted to know. Yeah. And 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 you see here the expression in uh, uh, derived by Wolfenstein in terms of the lambda parameter and these other parameters uh raw and eta and uh, and um, and uh, and a yeah. and uh, and here uh, you see um you see uh, a, a graphic uh, representation of uh, uh, the hierarchy uh, of the matrix and uh, and you see that uh, each quark has a preference to transform into a quark of its own generation and so these elements are are large and uh, and it has a very uh, suggestive uh, suggestive pattern and there are no reasons uh, uh, why uh, the pattern should should be this you know what what we observe and it is completely different in the neutrino in the neutrino sector so uh, this is quite quite a mysterious thing and here you see uh, the experimental uh, values uh, of uh, um, the various uh, um, terms of the CKM matrix. Uh, so these are experimental uh, uh, results for for the real part of the of the matrix elements. Now, uh, the unitarity of the CKM matrix uh, can be expressed. Uh, in terms of relations, uh, uh, so these are unitarity constraints, and uh, these unitarity constraints can be can be seen as the sum of uh, three complex numbers that close a triangle in a complex plane, and all triangles have the same area A, uh, which is half of the Yalskog invariant, and this is independent of the parameterization that you choose, and that, that is why this is called an invariant. And uh, um, so J um, is a measure of the CP violation in the standard model. And uh, remember that we introduced J at the beginning uh, of the lecture in the context of baryogenesis. So, 
if the triangle is squashed, then you have uh, you have no CP violation, uh, and J is equal to zero. And this happens if any one of the mixing angle or phases is equal to zero, because then uh, this product uh, goes to zero. And uh, uh, here is a, a, an illustration of the unitarity conditions. Uh, the, the six unitarity conditions that are expressed in this formula when you uh, replace uh, you know, the, the quark um, the, the, the quarks into, into these expressions. And you, you have many of these unitarity conditions. You have six of them. And, uh, and, but only uh, the so-called DB and UT triangles have sides of the same order, uh, which is order lambda to the cube. And, and so they are not squashed uh, because uh, the sides are uh, of the same order, while uh, uh, other triangles are, are much more squashed. Uh, and uh, the DB triangle, which is this one, is used to define the angles alpha, beta, and gamma. And this is what is normally called the unitarity triangle. While the UT triangle is of special re relevance for the physics of the B sub S mesons, so uh, B, B mesons with an S quark component. And uh, okay, here is the unitarity triangle. So the first one uh, of this, uh, 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 of this uh, uh, in this picture, and uh, uh, these are the definitions uh, of the angles alpha, beta, and gamma. And this is how the dimensions of the sides of the triangles are related to uh, the elements of the um, of the Kabibo Kobayashi Maskawa matrix. And the triangle has vertices as zero uh, uh, at one zero or a rho eta. With, with rho and eta defined by these expressions. And CP violation in the quark setter, which means eta different from zero, is translated into a non-flat unitarity triangle, which is what I told you uh, before. And uh, um, there has been a, a huge improvement in the knowledge of the CKM elements in the last uh, decades, thanks to the huge uh, experimental uh, effort. In fact, there has been 15 years of, uh, of, of uh, measurements uh, of, that led uh, to, uh, to, con to con rather uh, more and more accurate uh, determination of the apex. Uh, now, this is rho and eta define the apex of the unitarity triangle. And uh, you see here uh, an illustration of uh, how much one knew in 1988 uh, on the apex of this triangle, and then in 1995, and then the precision that becomes uh, 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 bigger and bigger. And so this is uh, here what is shown are uh, uh, eta versus rho. And, uh, and these are the values uh, taken from the PDG 2019. And this is, uh, you know, a, a more recent uh, plot. So you see again here uh, uh, the apex of the triangle, or in this other representation here, and uh, and these are all constraints, experimental constraints um, performed, uh, you know, doing uh, various type of measurements. And, and, and you see that uh, a priori, uh, if the CKM description were not uh, uh, you know, uh, a, a correct uh, representation of nature, uh, these, uh, uh, all these bands would, would not cross uh, in, in the same point. And, uh, and, and the fact that they do so is an incredible uh, success of the CKM paradigm. Now you see all these measurements, they all cross in, in this point. And, and so you have constraints from many different quark transitions that enter in, into these pictures and many, many uh, experimental results and also some theoretical input which goes into there. And you have uh, many, many measurements related to kaons, to, to D and B mesons performed at different, at different accelerators with different machines and different, uh, and different experiments. And at the current level of precision, all measurements are consistent and intersect 
uh, in the apex of the unitarity triangle. So from this, we conclude uh, that new physics effects, uh, if they are there, they are bound to be small. They are not large. And uh, uh, as, as I was saying, there has been a very large experimental effort and constraints coming from uh, K-Masons, for example, from the uh, an A4TA experiment at CERN or the CLAW experiments uh, in Frascati or the KTEB experiment at Fermilab. And then measurement of CKM parameters from DMB Masons, pioneers by Argus at DAISY, Clio and Clio C at Caesar. Cornell, followed by the so-called B-factory experiments, Babar and Bell, one in Slack and one in Japan at Keck. At Keck. And then also significant contributions from CDF and D0 at, at Fermilab, especially on, on, on B-sub-S uh, masons. Now, all the above experiments, all the ones that I mentioned in this uh, first part of the slide, have been terminated while Bell has been upgraded and uh, has started to, to, to take data very recently. It's now called Bell 2. And uh, uh, LHCB at the LHC is now dominating physics with B and C hadrons, while the general purpose detectors, ATLAS and CMS also contribute in selected areas. And, and Bell 2, as I said, is ramping up. And then there is also Best 3 in China that provides, provides many results on C hadrons, and then NH62 at CERN, and KOTO and J Park that measure very rare K on decay. So it's a very um, um, big effort from the experimental community all over the world. And um, uh, let us talk a little bit about the rise of, of B physics. And uh, uh, as I said already in many different ways, an accurate test of the CKM paradigm requires extending the, the physics program to heavy flavor hadrons, in particular to be Meson decays. And in the late 80s, um, studies had indicated that the best source for uh, such a program was uh, uh, would be an E plus E minus collider operating at the epsilon 4s. So the epsilon 4s is a quarkonium state made of a B and B bar which decays into uh, into into B particles. Uh, but the idea was uh, to uh, to make an asymmetric machine with beams of unequal energy. And this was an idea by Piero Done in 1987. So uh, as I was saying, the Y4S has a mass around 10 GV and decays essentially into BB bars, roughly equally into B plus B, B minus and B0 and IB0. And uh, uh, we, we, the, such a collider uh, uh, should have also had unprecedented luminosity. So this is a, a very high luminosity for luminosity is a parameters that qualifies the, 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 the intensity uh, of, the, um, of, of, of the collision, if you want. Uh, the more luminous is a machine, the more events you have and the more uh, statistics you accumulate. And uh, so this collider uh, needed to have a very high luminosity to produce enough uh, beam mesons. And two such asymmetric high luminosity E plus E minus colliders operating at the epsilon 4 s the so-called B factories, were eventually built in the 90s. So one in the United States and one in Japan. And the question is, why asymmetric? Why do you need to have an asymmetric machine? Well, if you have a symmetric B factory, uh, the, the, the small Q value of the epsilon 4 s into B, B bar results in B mesons, which are essentially produced at rest. And uh, uh, so uh, essentially, uh, they have, uh, uh, they, um, if you plug in um, the the B lifetime, which is 1.5, 10 to the minus 12 seconds, you see and you plug in the numbers which correspond uh, to uh, the generation of B mesons at an e a symmetric epsilon 4 s machine, you find uh, that the, the, the flight distance uh, uh, is uh, of the order of 30 microns. And this is a decay length, which is too small to be resolved by vertex detectors. But if you have an asymmetric B factory, you can uh, uh, induce a boost 
that increases the decay length. And so, for example, at PEP2, they collided 3.1 GeV E plus, uh, e plus um, 9, 9 GeV E minus head on. This gives a beta gamma, so a boost of 0.56 at the epsilon 4s, and an average separation between the two B vertices of 260 uh, microns, which is 10 times larger than what you had, uh, uh, the, what you would have with a with a, with a, with a symmetric machine. So you have a boost which is 10 times larger, and then you have uh, a decay length which is also 10 times larger. At CAC B, um, they collided a 3.5 GV E plus and an A GV E minus at uh, 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 with a sm small crossing angle. In that case, the boost was slightly smaller, and the average separation between the two B, B vertices was was 200 mic microns. This is something that you can detect uh, with your vertex detector. Therefore, you're in business, and uh, um, you should realize that this idea was a radical break with tradition, as it uh, having. Uh, you know, two beams of two different energies required having two separate beam pipes, each with their own magnetic magnet system and a very complex uh, uh, interaction region. So this was um, really an innovative idea. And uh, this is a picture of uh, uh, the Keck uh, B uh, and, and PEP2 uh, installations. Uh, so the experiment bell was was there and here you had uh, babar and uh, the machine had an exceptional performance they broke any existing record of instantaneous and integrated luminosity of the previous particle colliders and uh, recorded an unprecedented number of bb bar pairs at the epsilon 4s and here is uh, an illustration of the world record luminosity peak luminosity which is measured in in these units um, uh, centimeters to the minus two uh, second to the minus one and you see here kek b and pep2 you see here the lhc for example and various ma machines various accelerator um, uh, as a function of time from the 70 up to 2015. and uh, bell and babar were uh, took data uh, up to uh, 2008 in the case of uh, of Babar and 2010 in the case of Bell and each of the two experiments did um, an excellent job in reconstructing charge tracks and decay vertices which you need to be able to uh, detect the, the, the B mesons, uh, detecting photons even down to low energy and performing particle identifications to be able to reconstruct electron muons, pions, kaons and protons in the final state. And the golden mode uh, for uh, the discovery of CP violation uh, in the B sectors was the decay of a B0 into a J psi K, K short. Uh, so you have here an illustration of, of this uh, reaction, an electron and, and positron that produce two Bs, uh, one of which is used to tag the other Bs, the other B, and, and then you have in this case, for example, a, a B0 which goes into a J psi that decays into mu plus u minus, and then the K short which gives uh, to, uh, two pi on, the two pi on in the final state. And um, so this mode allowed the first observation of CP violation in BDKs at the B factories. And the, the idea uh, is that uh, uh, in this mode, you have a final state uh, which is common to both the B0 and the B0 bar. So both final states can access, can access this final state, J psi K0 shorts. And the interference between the amplitude for the direct decay of a B0 into uh, the final state and, uh, and the case in which the B0 first mixes into a B0 bar and then, and then decays into the same final state results in a decay time dependent C CP asymmetry that can be um, written uh, uh, in, in, in this way, which is a function of sine 2 beta and, uh, um, and 
where sine to beta is a parameter that identifies uh, CP violation is one of the angles of the uh, of the unitarity triangle, uh, where delta t is the time difference between the two k decays, and delta m is the mass difference between the heavy and light mass eigenstates. And uh, okay, this is um, the case of Babar and the case of Bell. Uh, what they saw. Uh, uh, take in event uh, cases in which they were tagging on one side or on the other and uh, uh, so this is the expression for acp as a function of delta t and uh, and they uh, and these are the asymmetries and they derived a measurement uh, of sine 2 beta which is uh, given here 0 0.677 and it's this constraint here in the unitarity triangle which is a legacy uh, b factory result and you see how uh, in time the the, the precision uh, on the on the measurement uh, uh, increased and uh, and the current average which is the one given given here okay uh, the main actors uh, in 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 flavor today are uh, are uh, atlas and cms uh, which are two large experiments at the lhc they are general purpose detector uh, they were constructed uh, to be able to detect uh, uh, any new physics that might uh, appear at the lhc and they have discovered the higgs so atlas and atlas and, and cms and um, Atlas and CMS, and then uh, there is NA62, which is a CERN experiment to measure the very rare decay of the K plus into pi plus nu nu bar that has a branch infraction, which is 10 to the minus 10, so very, very small. And then there is LHCB at the LAC and BEL2, which is the, uh, the, the continuation of BEL at CAC. They are dedicated detector for flavor physics uh, performing, uh, however, a wide range of measurements. And then you have other experiments like BES3, uh, COTO, MU2E, MEG2 that are also uh, doing flavor physics. So let us, uh, in the last few minutes, let us fly to the LHC. So this an, an image of, uh, uh, of the ring. Uh, of course, the ring is underground. Uh, here you see the Alps. Here you see uh, the Geneva Lake. And the LHCB is located at point eight uh, under the aerop airport. Uh, this is the Geneva airport that you, that you see here. And uh, the LHCB collaborate, collaboration is, a, is one of the small collaborations at the LHC, but still it is a collaboration with 1,400 members from 88, 87 institutes uh, originating from 18 countries and uh, with many publications, more than 500, some of them with very high impact. The main focus on the, uh, is on uh, heavy quark fla flavor, but uh, plenty other physics uh, in the forward direction has also been uh, uh, done by the LACB collaboration. This is, of course, a Photoshop because all these people would not allow to go uh, in the cavern, which is a cavern 100 meters uh, um, below ground uh, where the experiment is located. And this is the experiment here. Um, and uh, uh, so the LACB collaboration studies many things uh, related to CKM and CP violation, but also electroweak in the format direction, spectroscopy, uh, ion physics, exotica. But here I would like just to spend uh, the last uh, couple of minutes talking about rare decays, because this is not going to be covered by Marco Gersabek, and this is a very important subject. And uh, uh, so rare decays in a nutshell. So in the standard model, processes involving flavor changes between two up-type quarks, UCT, or between two down-type quarks, D, S, and B, are forbidden at tree level and can only occur at loop level, uh, which can be uh, through uh, so-called penguin diagrams, because you can, if you have a little bit of imagination, you can uh, you can think about uh, the shape of a penguin uh, associated to this diagram, uh, or box diagrams such such as this one. So these uh, uh, these decays uh, are suppressed, uh, are, are rare decays. Um, however, they are important because a new particle which is too heavy to be produced directly at the LHC 
can still give size, sizable effects when exchanged in a loop. So you could have, uh, for example, a supersymmetric particle uh, being produced and being running in this loop, or you could have you could have a charge Higgs, uh, for example, running in this loop. And so the strategy uh, of the study of, of these decays is to use uh, very well predicted observables. Uh, so uh, in, uh, decays for which the theoretical prediction is accurate in the standard model, and then look for deviations. So hoping to see something which is not what the standard model has predicted. This is an indirect approach uh, to new physics searches, which is complementary to that of ATLAS and CMS that are uh, also trying to produce uh, directly these, these particles. And one of the milestones of the flavor program is the study of the decay of the B0 or B sub S into a mu plus, into a mu, plus mu minus. And this is again, one of these uh, flavor changing uh, neutral uh, processes, which are very suppressed in the standard model, but are very precisely predicted. And for example, in the case of the B sub S, uh, the branching fraction is predicted with, you know, very uh, good accuracy at the level of 3%, 6%, uh, with a branching fraction, which is uh, uh, three parts in, uh, in, in, in 10 to the nine. So very rare. And the B0 into mu plus mu minus is even more rare, is uh, one part in 10 to the 10. But uh, these decays are sensitive to new physics because a large class, class of new physics theories, such as SUSY, which is at the moment, uh, uh, which is nowadays a bit a bit less popular than it used to be a few years back, uh, but uh, still uh, it's nice, you know, to, to if you can check uh, the existence of uh, SUSY particles, um, you should do so. And uh, in the case of SUSY, uh, this branching ratio could be enhanced uh, um, and, and so could be less suppressed uh, than what is uh, foreseen in the standard model. Moreover, having a, a, a simple final state, which is a simple mu plus mu minus final state, uh, leads to a very clean experimental signature. And so this decay has been studied by all high energy Hadron Collider experiments uh, in, in the past uh, 20 years or maybe more. And actually it was observed uh, by, uh, the B sub, by, by LHCB, so the B sub S into mu, uh, mu plus mu minus, this is the observation, this is the invariant mass of the mu plus mu minus final state. And you see a clear peak uh, of events uh, corresponding to the B, B sub S uh, decay, uh, but but also it has been uh, confirmed by ATLAS and CMS, so that uh, uh, at the last uh, ICEP uh, conference uh, in, in 2020 during the summer, um, a combination of the results uh, from ATLAS, CMS and LACB was performed and you see it here. You see here the, the branching ratio of the B0 uh, versus the branching ratio of the B sub S into mu plus mu minus. And you see here the standard model prediction and you see the, the, uh, the contour that corresponds to one sigma, two sigma and three sigma. And these black lines are the contours for the combination uh, uh, of the three experiments. and, and uh, and this is the result which is obtained uh, for the B sub S, while for the B0, there is an, an, an upper limit. And you see that uh, the B sub S is slightly off, but is still compatible with the standard model at the 2.4 uh, sigma level. And uh, so in effect, uh, there is a, good, a very good agreement uh, with the standard model uh, prediction. And, uh, but, but you, I mean, to find, uh, 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 to, to measure something so accurately uh, with a branch ratio uh, that is so small is, is, is really a big experimental achievement because it is really like finding a needle in a, in a haystack. And it, this leads to very important constraints to many new physics models as uh, shown, for example, in this plot, which shows uh, for various uh, supersymmetric models, the branching ratio of the, of the B0 and, and the B sub S on the, on the, uh, on the uh, X axis and the situation uh, allowed before the, uh, the, the LHC started to take data. And then, you know, uh, after the LHC, all this part is excluded and all these models are invalidated by the experimental measurement. 
And then uh, very recently, again at the ICEP conference uh, this summer, uh, first evidence for the decay of the K plus into pi plus in new new bar was shown by the NA62 experiment at CERN. Again, this is a very rare decay that proceeds through electroweak box and penguin diagrams in the standard model and could be sensitive to new physics running in these loops. Predicted at the level again of 10 to the minus 10 and the preliminary result shown uh, at ICHEP uh, was the observation of 20 events with an expected background of 7 and a branching ra ratio uh, of 11 uh, plus or minus 4, 10 to the minus 11, with a 3.5 sigma significance, which is again compatible, unfortunately, with the standard model within one sigma. And uh, uh, this is my last slide. Uh, yeah. And uh, uh, so th these measurements I, are very important because uh, they allow you to explore uh, the scales uh, of, uh, of physics uh, beyond the standard model, which are even higher than those that you can uh, explore with direct searches uh, at the LHC. Uh, so direct searches, access, uh, scales uh, of the order of, uh, let's say, depending on, on, on on the assumptions that enter in, in, into that plot, uh, but a few TV, let's say. But if you study uh, the B, the B sub S, K ons, uh, or you, if you perform other uh, type of measurements in the flavor sectors, for example, these involving decays of, uh, of the muons or mu 2 E gamma or uh, uh, experiments measuring the electrodipole moments, they can access indirectly very, very high scales. Uh, of course, then uh, you would like to see the particle that you're producing uh, as we as we did with the Higgs. Uh, but still, I mean, it's, it's good to be able to diversi diversify the program and, and try to have an idea of a scale where new physics could uh, possibly be. And so, uh, they open up this type of experiment, a window uh, on new physics at high scales. So uh, the take home message of this uh, uh, lecture is that uh, uh, flavor physics is a very rich and uh, field and is connected to many fundamental questions, such as what determines the observed pattern of masses and, masses and mixing angles of quarks and leptons. And uh, uh, it is connected to the imbalance between matter and antimatter in the universe. And uh, so we know the CP violation beyond the standard model must exist. And, uh, and we keep on looking for deviations to the CKM theory, even if uh, no deviations at the current level of precision has, has been found. A lesson from history is that new physics can show up at precision frontier before the energy frontiers. And I've given you two examples, uh, the gym mechanism that predicted charm before it, it was discovered and CP violation and CKM that were predicted before the discovery of, 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 of beauty and, and top. And then a data-driven approach in which uh, uh, we test the pre precise the standard model uh, predictions looking for discrepancy as, as illustrated, for example, in this result from NA62 or in the measurement of the BS uh, to mu mu um, decay is particularly re relevant in the absence of direct uh, collider production of new particles. And precise measurements of flavor observables provide a powerful way to probe for new physics effects beyond the standard model, complementing uh, direct searches for new physics uh, by ATLAS and CMS. And this closes my lecture. Thank you. Uh, Monica, thanks very much for this uh, comprehensive uh, uh, lecture on, uh, on, on flavor physics. It's indeed a very rich field. Um, people have questions or comments? So my, my colleague, uh, Marco Gersabek will illustrate more the experimental aspects. So if you want to measure a CP violation, you, uh, you must control your experimental systematics uh, very, very well, because you want to make sure 
that the asymmetry that you measure are not induced by your experimental apparatus. And um, this is, okay, uh, an interesting uh, aspect of, uh, of the measurements that we perform. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, there is a so, question here. Yes, who, is, uh, who wants to ask a question? Uh, Maki. Maki, okay, go ahead, please. Uh, Maki uh, um, is talking. So, um, what is determined uh, the rare decay that you talked about? Sorry? Uh, what is determining um, the possibility of uh, the rare decay or the rare decays? Um, so, like, well, how, how do you qualify a decay as rare? Is that well, the uh, Yeah. Well, a, a decay yeah. which has a branching ratio of, of the ratio of 10 to the minus 10, which is suppressed by loops and by helicity, a part in, a, in, yeah. in, in, in 10 to the 9 is a pretty rare decay. And uh, the amount of work which goes into suppressing the background originating from other, you know, much more common uh, decays is huge. Uh, because you have to find a way of uh, of not being swamped by by background, otherwise you will never find your uh, your uh, needle in 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 the haystack. Um, so experimentally, is extremely difficult uh, to suppress uh, to suppress these backgrounds. On the other hand, okay, the final state is quite quite clean and uh, and um, uh, the techniques uh, uh, which were developed uh, which are you know very small, smart smart techniques uh, using uh, you know modern uh, software uh, using uh, 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 training networks and, and and things like that to uh, to reduce the background allow you to um, to see a clear peak so there's no question that this is a real a real signal um, yeah the interest uh, of these decays is uh, these decays are interest only if you if you can have a, a, a very precise theoretical prediction so you should know uh, what uh, uh, the theoretical prediction is in the standard model to be able to look for deviations from the standard model that could signal uh, the presence of uh, new physics entering into these loops. So um, this is probably one of the most uh, uh, interesting aspects of the physics that is done in LHCB or in X62. Um, uh, look for deviations from a very precise uh, um, uh, theoretical predictions and hope to see some deviations, but uh, so far, uh, so far, I mean, things are pretty much in agreement. Uh, okay, here you have a two sigma effect, but uh, we are looking at so many things uh, that it's not surprising to uh, see every once in a while a two sigma effect. Other questions or other comments? Uh, I think we have uh, Professor Larbi here from uh, Morocco. Um, Larbi, you want to identify yourself? Yes, Mr. Kedivi. How are you? Fine. Very good. You yeah, it was a nice uh, presentation. Uh, by the way, I want to thank uh, the for uh, the nice uh, presentation. Excellent. Um, so, um, other people have uh, questions or comment? One question, maybe? Yes. OK. Uh, thanks, Monica, for the nice talk and for spending a lot of time so, with our students. Oh, Abdi Salam, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I didn't I, recognize you. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> well, uh, my question is about, uh, I saw in uh, maybe two slides before the end or three, uh, I was surprised to see that you are still talking about fourth generation, uh, not the other one, the plot. Yeah, 
Uh, this so one? This SM4, yeah. You mean fourth generation? Well, I'm uh, I'm not even sure. I mean, this is a plot by Straub, and uh, I I don't think it's worth uh, going into the details of those mothers who are dead anyhow. Anyway, my, but, uh, my question is, is yeah. the following. So, uh, yeah. since the discovery of the Higgs boson, so, well, uh, we could say that fourth generation alone is already excluded with some uh, confidence level. No, but, but there is still there is still a window if you add, for example, two Higgs to the another Higgs to the standard model. So you can still have a fourth generation that survives. And I'm, I'm, uh, you can always concoct a model that can yeah. uh, escape, uh, you know, the experimental um, the experimental measurements. Uh, however, uh, the you know the reality is that. Uh, that people don't talk uh, about Susie as much as, as they used to do in the past, uh, for obvious reasons, uh, because uh, natural Susie, uh, if it existed, uh, should have already been been discovered. And uh, and uh, as I said, uh, many uh, you know processes like uh, like ABS to MIMU put very serious constraints to large classes of models. And um, and therefore, uh, you know, the likely the likelihood to find uh, to find that type of new physics is not uh, is not so um, not so high. I'm okay. afraid. Okay, but, yeah, but uh, at least very good for uh, CP validation because fourth generation would have a lot of uh, extra source of CP validation. So in the especially in the CKM also yeah. in the generalized yeah. Uh, CKM. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, up, up this to I, the younger people live there, so <laughs> that's right, yes. Um, yeah, um, Professor Abdel Salam is from Tangier, and uh, uh, Labi is from Agadi, right? Where are you guys? Where yeah, are you guys? Yeah. Uh, you're all in different places, or uh, I Yes, you have here people yeah. connected from all over Africa. All over Africa. Yes. So I hope to be able to come in person uh, next time. Uh, um, I really hope to be able to come in person. Yeah. You're yeah, welcome. So yeah, we had the great. conference last September, but uh, maybe next year we can have some other Well, we, I was supposed to come to Morocco uh, yeah, this year, uh, but uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Monica was supposed to lecture at ASP 2020. So uh, oh, okay, I see you. Yeah. hopefully next year we'll, we'll, we will have her. Um, there is a question on the chat from Mohammed. Oh, he just said thank you. Okay, very good. All right, You're welcome. Yeah. Anybody else has questions? Uh, Monica, I actually I um I just have one question for you. Is is the is the CQM matrix in the quark sector, is that mapped exactly onto the one in the neutrino sector or are there some? No, they're, no they're completely different. Okay. They're completely different. But both of them uh, have uh, sources of CP? CP yes, uh, but, but uh, yes, but uh, I mean, CP violation in, in, uh, uh, in, in, in the neutrino sectors is, uh, is uh, it's one of the objectives of, of future experiments to measure that. I know. So, as different sources, the combination of those uh, CP sources is still um, is still not enough uh, to. It's not enough to explain uh, the the you know the baryon asymmetry in the in the universe. You need uh, yeah. many many orders of magnitude. So, in fact, the explanation. Uh, maybe in the neutrino sector uh, rather than in the quark sector. Uh, it could be that, uh, you know, uh, that baryogenesis through leptogenesis is the, is the, okay. is the real explanation and that, uh, um, and that study of CP violation in the quark uh, sector uh, may not find any, any deviation uh, from uh, what is foreseen by the standard model. We don't know. However, 
Okay. What is clear is that uh, the current level of precision is maybe of the order of uh, 10, uh, 10 percent or something like that. Mm -hmm. So if you have a deviation uh, which is smaller than 10 percent, yes. um, uh, you would not be able to see it at the moment uh, mm -hmm. because this is the typical precision of um, uh, of the of the um, of the measurements that we that we have now. Uh, but uh, okay, there are um, ideas uh, in LHCB. Okay, LHCB is, is being upgraded at the moment during this um, um, during this shutdown, and it will collect uh, you know uh, a much larger sample of data. And we are even talking about uh, an upgrade too, uh, because many of the, of the observable are still statistically limited, they are not uh, systematics limited. And so uh, being able to uh, collect more data will, uh, will allow us to, um, to be more precise and, and therefore to test uh, the theory, um, to test the model uh, even more, more accurately. Mm -hmm. And um, in, in the absence uh, of, uh, of an indication uh, 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 of, of scale uh, where new physics uh, might be, uh, I think uh, having multiple approaches and uh, looking at direct production and maybe building a new accelerators and trying to produce uh, directly these particles or trying to, um, to see them uh, through uh, quantum effects uh, as in the case of the, of the rare decays uh, through loops and uh, um, or accurate uh, measurements of CP violation. All these approaches um, are needed uh, if we want to, to try to uh, uh, to grasp uh, um, uh, some uh, you know some signals of uh, of physics beyond the standard model. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Um, any other question? Or last question. Yeah, just one. Um, I just want to know: Is there any com not complementarity, but uh, Super B is running? Uh, yes, I don't it's know running. What about Babar? But uh, Babar, no, is, Babar is close. No, no, close. no. It's 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 uh, Keck two that is running. It's Bell two. Yeah, yeah, no. Super the the B, experiment uh, in in uh, in Japan. They starting to take data, and uh, they have a very ambitious program. Uh, they are complementary in a sense because they are in the plus and minus machine. So there are things uh, they have a smaller, much smaller cross section. So uh, they they are not going to have uh, you know as many events uh, as as we do have uh, well, it's uh, at much the cleaner, LAC. I would say. But but it's cleaner. So th there are compl complementarity aspects. They do uh, uh, you know we look in the forward direction. Uh, while they, they can do an inclusive, uh, they can study inclusive, in, in the case inclusively, and they can study, for example, the case with photons and things like that, where we are not very good. And, uh, um, and, and so, in a sense, uh, it is uh, uh, a complementary machine, and it's also good uh, to, to be able to cross-check uh, um, what we are doing. You know that there are some hints uh, uh, which I haven't discussed, uh, of lepton flavor universality uh, um, in LHCB. And they will, they will be able to verify that. Uh, also, LHCB will be able to increase the statistics and increase the precision of these measurements. Uh, but uh, can it be that new physics is uh, expressing itself in, um, in a violation of lepton, of, of lepton uh, universality? Um, yeah. I didn't. I didn't discuss this, but this is an entirely different uh, lecture. But uh, so, for example, uh, if you have, you know, a s signal like this, uh, it's fundamental to have another experiment that can uh, be verify that independently. So um, uh, it's very important that they also run, and uh, they have, uh, you know, in an entirely different situation, entirely different uh, backgrounds, entirely different systematics. And uh, there are some things that they can do better and some things that they, they do worse. And that also at, uh, at the B factory, they don't have the B sub S, for example, production. We do a lot of physics with B sub S. I did not discuss that. We produce baryons, we produce everything. Uh, While well, they're limited in what they, they're looking at, at the Y4S. Mm. Yeah.
Okay. Now, just one curious question. Is there any relationship to Guido Alharili? He was my husband. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah. Um, okay. So, uh, you know, on the behalf of uh, the, the the committee, uh, local and, and international, uh, I would like to thank Monica for giving us uh, this uh, insightful lecture. So we hope to have you next time when we have the in-person ASP. So uh, thanks very much for, for being available and, and talking to us. Okay. Today. I hope so too. Yeah. Many thanks and bye bye. Yeah. Bye bye. Thanks everybody for okay, connecting. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thanks.